up a little bit to that Liam Cameron thing what I was saying before it cuts us off uh, Liam's a super middleweight and Sam Sheedy were a light middle and I think it told on the night and this is why it can be it can be advan what well, it's an advantage for some fighters who uh, can come down and then put the weight back on but other fighters they can't because really, in my opinion, Sheed is a welterweight fighting at light middle but moving up to middle. And Liam's a big super middle, isn't he? Yeah. So, that's just my opinion on it. But I wish Liam all the best and he's a great fighter. And he's got massive power for, for a middleweight. And he'd be losing all his attributes if he, if he came back at super middle. And he's been with Chris from age of 10. Chris Medley's took him to IBF World number 12, I think, Commonwealth Champion. They were in the mix before, obviously, all this we you uh, had and whatever, and I, f I feel for him. I think he's made a couple of wrong turnings in his career, but he can fight. ABA Champion we're talking about, aren't we? So I wish him yeah. well, and I wish Sam Sheedy well. So. Do you see um, Liam Cameron ever win the World do I see Liam Cameron winning a world title? No, I don't. But I can see him coming back and winning a British and middleweight. Also, as well, regarding. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so I was going to ask you as well. Um, for a casual fan, wants it to be hardcore, what does it take? What do you mean? What, what, what do you mean, what's it take? So, for example, for a casual fan wanting to be hardcore, what do they have to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know, do I? Well, for starters, you've got to go to shows, haven't you? Yeah. You've got to know a little bit about boxing, what you're talking about, haven't you? I don't know, really. I suppose uh, not probably all this casual rub rubbish that we have to put away, like Matt the Casual. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you hear him the other day? What a weapon. Where did, when they made weapons, they thought of people like Adam Smith and Matt the Casual. A Yorkshire you reject. Imagine, you know, imagine that about uh, what, something that he said, that would be talking about, um, that's another question, he said something to do with um, China and Saudi Arabia, how in the earth, basically giving them the opportunity to come in, obviously people can't get over there, that's, that's their problem. So, he, so Eddie Hearn wants to put the biggest fight in British boxing between two kids born in Britain. He wants to put it on in China and Saudi. Yeah. It just shows you what these people think about the fans, don't they? All, a lot of them are whores. They're putting money. They're putting money. Look, Joshua and Tyson Fury and Eddie Hearn are multi-millionaires, right? So. Why can't they just give something back to the fans instead of just taking all the time? They're all take, aren't they? They're not giving back. Well, why should they go to side? I don't want to hear all these people say, Oh, Borky, they've got families to feed. What? Well, they've got enough money for this, like, for their lifetime, aren't they? And their kids have. And blah, blah, blah. They've got families. You mean generations of people to feed? It's pure... Greed, just like Eddie Hearn with his own overpaying people, because it's other people's money and he's going to get his cut. If you've yeah. got millions and millions of pounds of somebody else's money and you're giving it to them, to fan, to sorry to fighters, and taking your cut off each fighter on the show, you're going to try and get every fighter on the show as an in-house fight, because you're going to get a cut out of everybody's money, aren't you? Yeah. If you've got a show with 16 fighters on, that's 8 fights in America, and you've got 8 kids from America, and 8 kids from England, and the 8 kids from America are American, and the 8 kids from England are your fighters, and the American ones are signed to Dazone, you quids in, because whatever money you're paying them rights fees for the full show, you're getting 20%, the full show might cost 
Well, Mikey Garcia and Jesse Vargas got $10 million, right? And Eddie Hearn had more fighters on that show. So just off them two fighters alone, he's had his cut, hasn't he? Yeah. And then there's all the other add-ons, the Sky money, and the other TV money around the world, and having it off. So they're going to try and keep it in-house. A bit like they do with the snooker and the darts, in-house. And with Sky, exclusive deal, and EIS up here, in-house. They've got that on lockdown, haven't they? So they're going to yeah. keep taking and taking and taking until somebody takes them. And Tyson Fury is the elephant in the room. They don't want to go near him. Because he can close them down, can't he, Tyson? He can shut them down. If he puts Joshua out of his misery, and by the looks of it, he needs putting out his misery. If they can put Joshua out of his misery, right, that's the end, isn't it, for Eddie Hearn. Because who has he got? Who has he got, really? A Coley? Come on. Tommy Coyle, is he going to make a comeback? Do me a favour. Do you know what I mean? But uh, I just think that it's greed, greed, and um, pure greed, and it's got to stop. There's got to be governments that come in and sort boxing out. It needs an overall, doesn't it? From It's rooted in corruption from the bottom to the top. People doing what they want and manipulating the system. Whatever happened to a fighter getting offered millions? And Eddie Hearn used to say, you've got to grasp them opportunities. Well, Joshua were offered millions to fight Wilder, but he didn't grasp them opportunities, did he? And now it looks like they're trying to say that Joshua is worth 60% of the cake against Fury, but yeah, he's been knocked out and he's a paper champ. Their Fury's belt's what he's got. He didn't beat Fury for them belts, did he? Fury never lost them belts in the ring, so Joshua is, he's like Tommy Gunn in Rocky V, a paper champion, because he didn't beat Rocky Balboa, did he? Now, that's how I look at it, right, and all the fans agree, the only ones who don't agree are people like Matt the Casual, because they're hanging out of the back of Eduardo and Joshua and all things match them and Sky, so... I bet you Dawson agrees with me, don't you, about that Fury beats Joshua? Of course Fury beats him, but they're not going to get that fight, are they? They're going to keep Joshua earning and earning and earning. And then eventually when the, the fans turn off and they've had enough of Joshua with your pool Fs, your Elenius and your Dylan White rematch. I mean, Dylan White was shocking in his last fight, and your Chisoras and people like that and I've heard Trevor Bryan's name mentioned because he's highly ranked with WBA he's a glorified English level guy when you've got people right milking the system they're going to keep milking until the fans go we've had enough and don't forget right you know when you keep telling lies like these people keep doing eventually anything you see out your mouth it don't mean anything, nobody listens. And I think that Eddie Earns got to that stage now where nobody believes anything he says, do they really? It's it was July 18th on it, he's showing his guard and it's now 25th. But fighters who have been offered 25th, they don't believe it. Nobody believes anything that comes out of the man's mouth because it's become like a contradiction. A bit like Tony Bell, you know the disappearing man, the man who wants to be left alone. Everything's become a contradiction, and it? it's become. I mean, the, you, you, have you seen IFL this morning, who they've wheeled out yesterday? I'm not going to say what they've talk, spoke about, but I knew it was going to happen. They've wheeled out Johnny Nelson and Spencer Fearing, haven't they, to paper over the cracks about what Dudas has been saying, haven't they? Yeah. Well, not going to what Joshua's been saying, but they've wheeled out Johnny F Nelson and Spencer Fearing, haven't they? Wheel them out. And then we'll wheel Eddie Hearn out later today. He'll be, he'll be piecing everything together with his, his little cult. He's got, it wants an overall boxing. It wants a full overall from top to bottom. It wants a full overall. Fighters need pensions. Fighters need booper. They need medical care after the careers. It all needs sorting out top to, from top to bottom. From the root to the fruit. It wants sorting out once and for all. 
People who are world champions should be world champions and kids who don't get a shot at the world champions should be. It's like, like I said the other week, if Liverpool decide not to play AC Milan in Champions League, they'd be hell on, wouldn't they? Yeah. Hey, we don't want to play them, we'll wait while, uh, uh, I don't know, if Borussia Dortmund, we'll wait while they get into the next round, we'll, we'll play them. It's wrong what's going on, but well, I, I, what can we do? I don't know, it looks like he's got an afro, doesn't it? Crikey, because I thought they got rid of him. Well, I don't know, it, well, it, no, he ran IFL. He won Sky Sports, oh. I've seen him this morning on IFL while I was eating me, uh, me blended uh, Special K in a, in a beaker, or like that. <laughs> Choke, choking. <laughs> I was choking on, on me uh, Special K this morning while watching Dude. Spencer X. Dude, can we do some uh, arsenic in the now? Um, I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Spencer's... Uh, he knows how to play the game, doesn't he? We're talking about a man here that never won a belt, but he's a character. and he, he's, he's, he's done well to get where he is in boxing. If they're going to wheel him out to help help the the people behind them or whoever's involved in all this nonsense that's going on, they'll wheel him out. They'll wheel Johnny out, won't they? I haven't seen Johnny's one. Well, I've seen the first couple of minutes of it, uh, but I'll never get that 25 minutes of my life back if I watch it. So, and I think I've heard all their nonsense before, but I listened to Spencer. I listened to Spencer this morning and. Uh, you know, it's upset my stomach, I need some uh, Gaveston now. Shout out to Gaveston, if you want to send me some Gaveston, send me a big crate of it. Are you with him still fighting, or not? If he wants to fight me, spends a few and I'll fight him at £200, I'm not bothered. If you, he knows where Sheffield is, doesn't he? Come see me, Spencer. UCTV Boxing, very good bloke, uh, got a big following and he breaks things down with facts. Very smart kid he is, got very good tech skills, got to give him his credit. Give him a follow, UCTV Boxing. However, he's behind the camera and same as you, your Ultra Tech Sports Raw, very good bloke. Give Ultra Tech Sports Raw YouTube a follow, tell him Big Porky sent you. UCTV Boxing, Ultra Tech Sports Raw Boxing. But them lads are behind the camera, but they've come out and said, we're behind the camera because we don't want to put our face in front of it because they'll have to go through what I go through. See where I'm coming from? Yeah. But I've got no to hide. I'm pretty transparent, so people can make up as much crap as they want and throw it all at me. If it stops other people getting crap, throw it all at me, bring it. But I can understand why they do that. They won't have to listen to what crap I have to wake up to in the morning. Utter nonsense. So that's why I have somebody else deal with emails now. So, but both good boxing men. Terry Chappendam as a trainer. He, he's beautiful podcast. The beautiful boxing podcast. Is it? He's a, he's an amateur trainer at Fitzroy Lodge, and he's a banker in London. Is it a merchant banker? I don't know. He's a banker anyway. But Terry is a good boxing bloke. So is Rico Elia, my pal. They're good boxing people. What what, what other one you said? Give the Boxing Asylum a follow, I like them lads, Andy Patterson is it, Scottish kid, Steve Wellins, Brummy living in Ireland, Ozzy Smith, is he Chorley, Smiddo, I don't know what, so I think Smiddo is the voice of casual boxing at the moment, and he's gone, gone into casual mode, he's a big critic of mine Smiddo, I wake up in the morning, there's usually a, a text off Smiddo, criticising me, but very constructive, nice kid though, but Smiddo, like I said before, is he's from the horse racing industry. And uh, he's from the horse racing industry. If he's used to seeing ten horses running a race, the best horses for that, whatever it is they're running in, thousand guineas, two thousand guineas, whatever, you're not always going to get the ten best fighters in the top ten fight each other, are you? 
So he's probably a bit disillusioned with the sport. A little bit similar to me, because I am. Yeah. At times. But give them lads a follow. I don't know what Smido is on Twitter, is it? At Smido1. At the beautiful boxing, is it, Terry, on Twitter? Give him a follow. And I know Rico's is at lead, L E A D underscore right. Give all them a follow, Boxing Asylum. They're all good they're all good boxing people, I call them my peers. And I listen to their stuff. I don't listen to other stuff. You know, there's a lot of people who are not going to put out what they should put out around, around certain issues because they are hanging out of the back of them. Well, we're not like that here. So, but we're not arming anybody, are we, uh, Big V? No, nah, mate, we're just telling the truth, aren't we? Tell the truth. You see, the thing is, when you tell the truth, it be, you become... It, it, become, it gets out there and, and everybody can give an opinion on it, but once you tell a lie, you've got to tell another. Then you've got to tell another, then you've got to carry it around with you, or you've got to shut it down. You can only do two things with it. It's like, if I say I give uh, a fiver to charity 